Looks like a big brown bat. We're here tonight to do what we call a bat survey. So we come out into the field and we're finding locations where we think we'll see bats foraging at night so that we can catch those bats and get more information about them when we have them in hand. Yep, very good. Okay. This is the big brown bat, which is one of our two house bats in Vermont. We'll tuck this bat in this bag and then we'll be able to process it. We're researching bats right now because we're interested in knowing what our populations look like around the state, but particularly six of our nine species are bats that go to caves and mines in the winter, and so they're threatened by something called white nose syndrome. Named for a distinctive fungal growth on the muzzle and wings of hibernating bats, white nose syndrome was first identified in Vermont caves in 2008. The poorly understood disease has since been associated with the deaths of millions of cave-dwelling bats in North America. The infection agitates bats during hibernation, causing them to consume precious energy reserves and eventually starve or die of exposure. White nose syndrome is a tremendously infectious disease caused by essentially an invasive fungus that has, we believe, come over from Northern Europe. And this fungus is, is very different in that most fungi do not kill their host, but this, this particular fungus does. Oh, did you hear me? Why? Another bat. Bat, let's up, Joel. As Vermont's lead bat biologist, Scott Darling has been studying bats since 2002, and he has seen firsthand the devastation that white nose syndrome has had on our bat populations. In 2010, uh, the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department did a, a year-long assessment of the status of our cave bats, which are the six bat species that are affected by white nose syndrome. And we repeated uh, mist net surveys, acoustic surveys, uh, hibernacular surveys, and compared them all to our pre-white nose syndrome numbers. And we found that we had declines of between 75 and 95 percent in our bat populations, these cave bat populations. The little brown bat, um, the Indiana bat in some parts, the tricolored bat, and the northern long-eared bat have all been greatly affected by this disease. With fewer bats darting through the night sky, it's not uncommon for the nets to come up empty. But on this warm, buggy June night in Addison County, the researchers were thrilled with the number and diversity of bats that were caught in just a few short hours. So it's a nice big brown bat. <laughs> Ooh, who are you? Mm -hmm. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> You're thinking small-footed, that's what I'm thinking. Data is collected from each bat, including sex, weight, and forearm measurements. The bats also receive a small metal tag that is attached to their wing, the tag allows biologists to identify individuals when they're recaptured. Here she goes. Each bat is also inspected for its general health and signs of white nose syndrome. Do you guys want to turn our lights off? This is a technique of, uh, of putting this ultraviolet light on the wing of the bat. And when a bat has had the effects of white nose syndrome infecting into the tissue of the wing, it would show up with this orange colored um, fluorescence and uh, this really looks relatively clean for a bat of this species that's so badly affected by white nose syndrome. 4.5 grams. Oh my! Yeah. That was four and a half grams? So yeah. it is just a little bitty duffer. It's a little, little bat. With little tiny sharp teeth. And they eat half their weight About half night. their weight in insects at night during the summer. Well, Bats are important to society, to the world, to nature, because they're the primary forager on nighttime insects. So they're out eating everything from moths, beetles, agricultural pests, human pests. It's been estimated that they save the agricultural industry upwards of $3.7 billion a year just in the U.S. on what we probably would be spending on pesticides to deal with that pest control. So natural, natural pest control. As you can see, we could use a couple more around here. <laughs> as of 2013, five of Vermont's six cave-dwelling bat species are listed as either endangered or threatened. One of the species in New England hardest hit by white-nose syndrome is the northern long-eared bat. 
many of the estimates are 95, 99% declines in northern long-eared bats. We may be talking much more than local extirpation. We may be talking about extinction for, these, for this species in particular. It is amazing to think that we are acting now to try to reduce any other forms of mortality on our bats to try to just buy some time. There are several of my peers who agree with me that in fact there are some species such as the northern long-eared bat who feel that perhaps populations are so low now they're just not sustainable. Another pregnant female. Most bats give birth to only one puppy a year. That makes it a priority to preserve the habitat that female bats use to raise their young during the spring and summer months. This is uh, an Indiana bat which is both a state and federally uh, endangered species which really makes it quite special for us here in Vermont. In order to track bats to their maternity colonies, a special lightweight transmitter is attached to the adult females of Indiana and little brown bats. This has allowed biologists to gain a better understanding of the habitat needs of these tiny creatures. So the great thing about this glue is that the glue will eventually just lose its bond after a few weeks and fall off. And the idea with putting the transmitter on is that a female is part of a larger colony in this species. So this bat, when she flies back to her roost at dawn, she'll probably be roosting with a number of other females that are pregnant as well. And so then tomorrow we can go and track her to probably the tree that she uses. And um, we could count anywhere from five bats with her to um, in the past, we've counted over 100, although um, not as many since white nose syndrome. There are several of the cave bat species in particular that have an overlap of habitat needs, and this being dead and dying trees. The Indiana bat, the northern long-eared bat, uh, the big brown bat, and to some degree the little brown bat can use dead and dying trees to roost in and may have their maternity colonies there. So we really do want to encourage people to conserve these dead and dying trees. They may look ugly, but if they have loose bark or they have cavities, there may in fact be a bat colony in there. The Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department depends on volunteers to help it keep tabs on bat colonies. A dedicated page on its website is in place as a resource for anyone interested in helping or learning more about bats. While some people are still afraid of these furry little creatures, in large part because they can carry rabies, there are a growing number of people who are going to great lengths to protect these tiny denizens of the dark. Although bats should never be handled without suitable precautions. I find bats to be beautiful. If you look at some of their fine facial features, delicate little ears, um, tiny little toes and little toe hairs. So I find them to be really interesting, tiny, fragile, but highly intelligent and incredible acrobats, which is exciting to me as an athlete to see these animals that can just make incredible maneuvers in the air. There is no cure for white nose syndrome. Closing mines and caves to the public to reduce the inadvertent spread of the fungus by spelunkers, along with protecting roosting habitat are two steps that Fish and Wildlife has taken to combat the impacts of this deadly disease. Searching for additional ways to protect current bat populations has become a year-round project. We've really been focusing on finding out what are the impacts of that disease on our bat population and what is it that we could do to keep that population intact. There really isn't a low time of year simply because of the devastation from this disease. Uh, we're not gonna rest. We're gonna keep gaining this information as much as we can. Here we go, guys.